Hey there, welcome to module 14 of the Satin Hill Farm course. This module is all about tools and supplies. And before we get into it, I just have to have a huge thanks to our sponsor, Paper Pot Co. Without the help of Diego and Paper Pot Co., this entire course wouldn't be possible and more on them later. In this module, I will cover all the tools that are needed for bed prep and soil work, harvesting, planting, nursery management, and some other tools. Well, I've been referencing tools throughout this course in previous modules, and I will talk about other tools in modules coming up, but I wanted to make one video that kind of has everything in one package for you to see. And all the tools, I will try to find links for everything I can find, and they'll be listed in the description down below. One thing I want to say is that over the last few years, I've really narrowed down my selection of tools because I just realized what I needed, what I didn't need, and found out what worked for my system, and that's kind of what I want to explain to you here today. And the the le the smaller amount of tools that you have, the happier you'll be. There'll be less clutter. You'll obviously spend more, less money, and you'll just be happier with less stuff going on. So before I get into the tools, I just want to say, make sure you have a place to keep your tools. So here I have this very simple tool storage, which is just a rack and a piece of plastic roofing. Works great. Doesn't keep it completely out of the weather. For some stuff that I really want to keep out of the weather, I keep it in my shed, which is nearby. And one thing I want to say is to have a good place for your tools to be stored, but also to keep it close to where you need it so you can minimize your footsteps and not waste time. So this is like right next to my beds, which is awesome. If you have a bigger farm, you might need more than one of these tool setups uh, and have multiple kits uh, so you can get tools close to where you need them. So let's get into some of the tools here. So first, let's talk about some bed prep tools. Um, I have three rakes. So the first rake is what I call a hard rake. So just a pretty standard rake, but it's not flexible. I use this for spreading out compost and building beds. It doesn't get a lot of use otherwise, but it is a really nice rake to have. Next one is what is what I call a soft rake or a leaf rake. So most people use this for raking up leaves. This is great for clearing off beds after you pull out a crop. So I'm clearing out debris or wood chips. Um, and if you're curious about any of the bed prep stuff, go check out the module that's about my no-till practices. I go through how do I flip a bed and how I use all these tools. The third rake is the landscape rake. And a lot of these rakes, you just get at any sort of hardware store. This is a 36 inch wide landscape rake. My beds are 30 inches wide, but this is what I use to finish off the beds at the end of the, the bed prep. Some people like the 30 inch rake, which you can get one, uh, a bed prep rake from, I think Johnny sells it. It's pretty expensive. You could also cut the ends off these if you want, but I actually really like the 36 inch rake. I've gotten used to like pulling at an angle and have my own style with that. But this is again, used to just finish off the bed after you're done prepping it. So this gets used every time I flip a bed. All right, so there's some other tools over here. The broad fork, highly recommend this. This is a huge part of building soil health and structure without um, causing too much damage to the soil. This one, a friend of mine made who is fairly local to me, but if you're looking for a great broad fork, Paper Pot Co. sells some awesome ones, really high quality ones, so I'd recommend you go check out what they have. This is a tool that makes itself obsolete uh, after a few seasons if you're using it properly and incorporating the no-till practices, but uh, absolutely crucial on a farm, especially if you're breaking new ground or uh, there's a lot of uses for a broad fork, but it definitely has a place on the farm here for sure. Uh, having a good shovel or two is great. Uh, of course, there's gonna be other tools that you're gonna need for any sort of property, but shovel's important. Another one is this guy here. So this is, it's got 10 tines instead of uh, other ones that maybe have four or five. I like this one a lot for moving wood chips because it's really easy to get this in the pile of wood chips and lift them up. So uh, use this for that and sometimes moving compost, but one of these is awesome. Uh, what else do we have over here? Um, we have the tilther, which I talked about in that module two. And this is what I use to uh, help prep the ground. It's a very small, uh, you can call it a tiller because it goes down about an inch. And this is what sort of incorporates amendments and smooth things out. And this is a totally optional tool. This is not cheap, but I absolutely love it. I think it's it's been worth it for me. I really like what it does to prep the, the soil for me. And uh, as I said, this is an expensive tool and this is optional. You can definitely get away with a rake. Uh, one thing I want to point out about this is if you need this, buy a really nice drill. Uh, I'm a big fan of DeWalt. I've never been sponsored by them or anything, but they, uh, I, just, I buy the most expensive DeWalt drill I can find. And make sure you get some big batteries because this will chew through batteries real fast. This is like a, a six amp hour battery um, and I can do several beds with this. So 
Make sure you get a couple big batteries and a big powerful drill. This drill you can also use for the greens harvester, which I'll talk about later. So I absolutely love the tilter, but it is a optional tool. We'll talk about hose briefly here. This will come more into the, uh, the weed management module. The first hoe that I have over here is going to be the, what's called scuffle hoe or stirrup hoe. I haven't used this tool in years, but I have a couple of them laying around. Um, there's a few reasons for that. One is my weed management style, which I'll get into is, it, I, this isn't necessary anymore. If you are clearing out beds, a lot of people use this to crop out crops, um, but more often people are managing walkways with a hoe like this, and they come in different widths, or a, um, a wheel hoe. So those are the, this can be very valuable for a lot of people. I just don't use it anymore. It's neat because it goes, it goes back and forth so you can push and pull it. But this, what I've noticed about using this is it does um, need a good amount of labor from the farmer. And as you get older, you wanna do things that are easier on your back and easier on your body. So this, you have to put a good amount of effort in uh, if you have some stronger work to do in the ground. But a lot of people have a couple of these around in different sizes for different jobs. So the, the more common hose that I use are these two here. This is the collinear hoe. This one is from Johnny's. So this one's great for light cultivation. And I do love this tool. And one thing that's I've sort of already talked about with the scuffle hoe is that this is what's known as a thumbs up tool. And this is great because when you're working, your thumbs are up, you're upright, you're not leaned over, especially great as you get older, or even if you're younger, you need to protect your back and be careful of that. Uh, so this is great because I can walk around, do my uh, cultivation and uh, not be leaning over and pushing into the soil too much. So this is not for heavy work, this is for light cultivation, which we'll talk about in that module. And then, the other one I use pretty often is a wire weeder, and this one is also great and used in slightly different applications. I like this. I've been using this more often because um, I have drip irrigation and it doesn't have sharp edges. So between those two of them, that's what I use for cultivation. So those are those are the main hoses that I have on the farm. And there's a couple other tools here, but we'll talk about them in a later section. A couple more things over here I want to show you. This is, I, used, I call this the cart port. <laughs> Talk about this in a previous module, but I like to keep the wheelbarrow and cart under here just to keep the rain off of it and the sun off of it. Makes things last a lot longer. But keep these, um, these wooden stakes around. These are what I use to measure out the beds uh, ahead of time. And these stay in the ground all the time. They're permanent bed markers for the permanent beds. But having a few extra around is great because they break every so often. So those are great. Also keep a bunch of mason twine around. Um, I use this for marking out beds for when I'm prepping them and planting them. So keeping a roll of this is, is super helpful. Get that in any hardware store. This is a garden cart. This is from Vermont cart. Um, and I, I don't remember, they have a couple of different models. This is I think one of the smaller ones, I think. But this is great with the buckets. These are just five gallon buckets. We use this for transport, it's transporting compost and wood chips. And I found it's easiest to bring this over to the piles, fill the buckets up in the cart, and then bring them down and then I can distribute them out into the beds that way. Of course, having a good wheelbarrow or two is super important. Uh, this is something I would not leave out on any farm or just any property, really. And then lastly over here is having a couple of silage tarps, which I've talked about in bed prep, but you can use them for a lot of things. So right now they're not really being put in use, but they will be shortly. So if you're curious about silage tarps, there's information about prepping ground and all that kind of stuff using silage tarps. They're super, ha super handy and very effective. Let's talk about planting tools. The number one planting tool that I use is going to be the Jang Seeder, which I talked about in depth in the direct seeding module. I highly recommend this tool. I don't think this is optional. I know it's expensive, but if you're starting a farm and you're starting a business, and you're trying to go for profit, the precision of this in terms of getting proper stands in your beds, um, giving you huge yields, also saving you a ton of time and just low frustration. And it's just a well-built tool to last a long time. I highly recommend these. Paper Pot sells them. They also sell a kit with the rollers that I use, which is super cool. So again, if you're looking for more details about this, check out the direct seating module, but a uh, great piece of kit, highly recommend it. And uh, I don't think it's optional if you're starting a farm business. In addition to that, if you are transplanting, there's a couple things you need. What I really like is this. This is the gritter and they come with different numbered heads. So this is the three. So I talked about this in the transplanting and interplanting module. They're red because we got them powder coated, otherwise they rust really easily. But um, I like this a lot for getting the spacing right in my transplanting. 
So again, go check out that module. Um, you just buy the heads that you need. So I only use the three and the four. I do have the two also, but just buy the ones you need for the crops that you like to use. And so you, the kit will come with different rollers with one handle and you can swap them out. But I, I wound up getting another handle, which has been great because it saves me time and just, you know, less frustration. One thing I want to point out was the, the replacement handle that they sent me was like a two piece one with this like connector bit. And I, I wind up like cutting my hands on these bolts and stuff pretty often. So I don't know, the one handle is nicer, but you can just buy one handle and swap them back and forth. Um, it'll work fine. Another thing is the paper pot transplanter. And it's something that I personally don't use just because of my farm design and layout. And it just wouldn't really work for me here. But I know it is a super important and game changing tool for a lot of farmers out there. It allows you to transplant things out super quickly. Again, it's a pretty pricey tool, but will save you tons of time, especially if you're doing lots of transplanting in a short period of time. Of course, go check out Paper Pot Co. if you're looking for either the Jang Cedar or the Paper Pot Transplanter. In terms of nursery tools, I went over this in the nursery management module, but if you're doing soil blocks or want to do soil blocks like I am, the first thing is going to be a soil blocker. And this is a pricey one. This is the stand-up blocker that you make one-inch blocks, does three, 35 at a time. If you're getting into soil blocks in any sort of scale, this makes it possible and enjoyable. And so I highly recommend this tool. If you're just dabbling and you want to try it, they make hand blocking tools. This is a two inch blocker, but you can get them in different sizes. These are a lot more uh, inexpensive, but of course require a lot more labor to get the soil blocking done. You'll need some trays. These are my favorite kinds of trays to put the soil blocks in. Of course, you can see in here, there's no, nothing started because it's the end of my season. I'm gonna be taking the summer off. Need something to mix up the potting mix in uh, with the water to make the blocks in. You'll need some good potting mix. Uh, you'll also need a good watering wand. This one's my favorite. It's the Wonder Water. It creates a really fine, gentle mist, which I like. And otherwise, uh, something to mark your trays. I just use painter's tape and a Sharpie. Uh, so there really isn't that much in here to, uh, to talk about in terms of tools and equipment, but having some tables. I like ones that the airflow can go through so that the roots don't mat out and allows water to drain out. But otherwise, you know, if you're, if you're not in a nursery, you can need to go under lights, those kind of things. But again, for more details on that, go check out the nursery management module. Let me jump in here real quick and take a minute to talk about our sponsor, Paper Pot Co. As I mentioned at the beginning of this module, this entire course is sponsored and made possible from the support of Diego and Paper Pot Co. I really can't thank them enough for supporting me and the farming community in general. And I really recommend that you go over to check out what they have for sale on their website. We're talking about tools and supplies. And of course, some of the best things you can buy from them would be, as I mentioned, the Broad Fork, the Jang Cedar, and the Paper Pot Transplanter. But they also have a lot of other great stuff to check out. And they're really a reliable place to buy things from. And they have awesome customer service. In addition to all that stuff, Diego is an awesome podcaster and YouTuber. So go check out his podcast, Farm Small, Farm Smart and Carrot Cashflow, which is his new one. There's also additional resources for this course over at paperpot.co slash Josh. So go check that out. Thanks again to Paperpot for sponsoring this and back to the module. We definitely need a few things for harvesting and so let me go through those. First of which, I, I like these totes a lot. I've got these at Lowe's. These are the 18 gallon totes. They went up in price significantly lately, but this is what I use. Uh, for all the totes that I harvest on, I write harvest on the side or you can write field tote or whatever because you want to make sure that whatever you're harvesting into, you don't put final products into for any reason. Uh, for me now, when I'm harvesting, they'll go after they get washed, they go into a bag and not a tote. I'll go through all that in the harvesting module, but I label them so that because they have soil in them, I don't want to have clean products in them. So these are the totes I use. They're great. They they kind of fit in my 12 inch walkways. If you had 14 or 18 inch walkways or something like that, they, they do fit really well. But this is what I'll harvest into. And when I'm out in the field, what I'll do is I'll use this scale, which is a mechanical scale. I'll put the, the tote on it and tear it and then take the, the bin out and harvest it and I can weigh things as I go. So if I know I need you know, 30 pounds of lettuce uh, on each tote, I can weigh it so that I don't come back to after I'm done washing and have either way too much or not enough. So I use this out in the field. I also use this scale for weighing out amendments. So this is great. I like a mechanical scale. There's really nothing to go wrong with it. Don't have to change batteries. Also has a pretty high weight capacity. So this is great. So this is one of the scales I use. The other scale that I use is this one here. This was a little bit pricey, but I was sick of buying cheap scales and then breaking all the time. And so what I do is this is what I weigh uh, cleaned finished product on. It's very accurate and I think it's important that you're really accurate with those weighings because you don't want to short your customers. So 
to having something that's very reliable. This one's great because it's battery powered. I charge it a couple times a year and it's good. Uh, highly recommend investing in a good scale. This again was pricey, but as I've replaced a few scales over the years, I haven't had to replace this one lately. So uh, that's great. In terms of the actual harvesting, uh, there's a couple things that I recommend. One is like a really good knife. This is a very inexpensive little serrated knife that I've been using. I have a few of these. Uh, they work pretty well for lettuce and, and those kinds of things. Um, but if you're doing baby greens at all, highly recommend the Quick Cut Greens Harvester from Farmer's Friend. I haven't grown baby greens in a while, so I haven't been using this. But if you want to do any sort of scale with things like arugula, baby kale, um, any of those smaller greens like mescaline mix or anything like you're going to need or spinach, you're going to need one of these. Like this, I, I can't express how much time this saves. And if you've ever seen one of these in action or if you ever used one, you'll know right away that you'll need one. Um, so again, if you're just doing a few things here and there, maybe on super small scale, maybe you can get around it. But if you're trying to make money with baby greens, this is um, definitely a necessity. In addition to these tools and, and equipment here, Make sure you have a wash station, which I'll go through this wash station in detail in a future module, and make sure you have some refrigeration because you have to make sure you'll be able to refrigerate your products before you send them out to your customers. A couple other miscellaneous items I want to mention here. Uh, first of which, tunnels and irrigation, which I talked about in previous modules. If you're going to be doing any sort of winter growing or getting out crops early in the spring, row cover is important, which I talked about in the winter growing module. And to set those up, you need those wire hoops for the beds. You also need those wire hoops for insect netting. So I'll talk about insect netting in the pest management module. So those are all things you're going to need. In addition to the wash station, which I just briefly talked about, you're going to need to figure out a way to get your products to your customers. So you're going to need some sort of delivery vehicle. It can be a personal vehicle. I used my wagon for a long time. I upgraded to a minivan uh, or you can use a pickup truck. Um, but you need to make sure you can be able to move the produce that you need. Vans are great because they're covered and you can keep them cool in there. Uh, also, I, be, I use these big coolers here with ice packs in them. And I'll show you that with, in future modules how this whole setup works. But that allows me to transport greens and veggies in the summertime when it's super hot. In addition to all that, if you're going to a farmer's market, you'll need a whole farmer's market setup. So the pop-up tent, the tables, all the stuff involved with a farmer's market setup. So keep all these things in mind as you're planning out your farm. Maybe some things that if you're just getting into this and you haven't really thought through, make sure you have the budget for all these things. Some things you can DIY more than others or um, improvise a little bit, but most of these are necessary. And overall, it's not a huge expense, but they're things that you should plan for. And this is most of what I need for the farm and hopefully this was helpful for you. Remember, there are live Q&A sessions following every module, which are on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Also, the next module, module 15, will be all about pest management. Hope to see you there. Woo!